Shalom, shalom, and welcome back to the channel. I am the Code Searcher, and we're going to be talking about weed again, you guys. I know some of you are counting the Omer right now, and with the last few videos that I've uh, put out, I've tried to spark some thinking on your part um, to the condition of the wheat. This is a count leading up to Shavuot, you guys. We're, we're, um, we're going to be talking about that, what the text actually says. All right. One of the last videos, uh, I told you that, that the word Pentecost is a misnomer and it's very misleading. Um, and I think it was done intentionally because as you can see behind me, this is one of the first pictures coming in. And this is right in the heart of the Grain Belt in the United States in Oklahoma. This is a wheat field and what it looks like. Now consider this, if you're counting a 50 count, and this is a, this is a feast where you're gonna wave loaves that have been harvested. And then this is wheat that's been harvested, threshed, milled, turned into flour, turned into loaves, and then taken to wave uh, as an offering. This wheat, is not in the stage it needs to be in to be processed. It's far from it, you guys. And here we are creeping up on the 50-day mark. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And it's to get some thinking going. I'm not trying to be contentious in this subject. I'm trying to bring something to the table that doesn't make any sense. When you look at it on the surface and you look at what Pentecost is, but when you look at the actual text, there's a couple of things going on. I can see where people stop at 50 and they call this Pentecost, but it cannot be celebrated as Shavuot, you guys, because it does not fit the requirements. There must be wheat. It is a wheat harvest festival. That's what it is. Okay. So there has to be wheat. This is the condition of the wheat right now. This was sent in. Um, by a subscriber and a lady that lives in the area. And just just like this, any of you that are living in any state, and I mean from West Coast to East Coast or in Europe, because the wheat's going to look the same way. Go to the field, take pictures, make sure there's time stamps so we can verify that. We don't want to see fields from, you know, last season or a couple of years ago. All right. I had somebody this week who took up my challenge, tried to take up my challenge, with some fraudulent information and some dates that they were posting saying, oh, well, there's a, there's a wheat harvest starting May 1st in Alabama. No, <laughs> there's not. And sending me pictures of barley. Uh, you got to do better than that. I know the difference between wheat and barley. And you should too, if you're going to make the argument. Otherwise, sit down and stop. Just stop with the nonsense. I realize I got a couple of trolls that are coming along and trying to take it as an opportunity to stir up some uh, some, you know, contention or some confusion, um, but they're really not studied at all. And I had to ban one guy uh, just for being the way he was and just way overly aggressive about his information. And then when I checked him out, it was all made up. Um, as you're going to see, I'm going to show you with the USDA charts on calendar and then planting and harvest. Uh, his dates didn't match what the information actually said. So, Bye bye. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play with people like that. I'm not gonna waste my time trying to explain. This, this is for people who really want to know because they're they're convicted and they want to know what you know what the date is. It's been hidden from us, you guys, and I find that really interesting because when you look at it on the calendar, of where Shavuot falls every year, it is a new moon. There is no moon showing, and it's the only feast in Yehuda's feast. That's that's no moon. On either side of the feast spectrum are full moons, and in the very center you have a new moon. That's a pattern. I believe it's it's telling us something that it's a hidden day. You who hid it, and he hid it for a reason and for a season, and that season is now. You guys, there are more and more people that are waking up to this information and realizing, oh my gosh, the day the spirit was poured out in the upper room. Is not 50 days, you guys. It's more like 102 days um, was what it comes out to. 
Okay, so we're going to look at some information. Get this adjusted. I know it kind of looks weird. I've got a couch here, so it kind of disappears. So it looks like I've got like this weird thing going on in my arm. And also, uh, my beard being white it kind of fades out a little bit. So that's kind of weird looking. Um, I'm not sick. <laughs> I've lost any weight. That's just camera doing something weird. I want to go to Leviticus and read this. And let's, let's kind of refresh our memory on what it's all about. All right, so this is where you're going to find where our feasts are and when it's commanded, where it's commanded, that we keep these feasts. Now, we're going to, for the sake of time, we're going to go down to um, the, feast, the feast in question, right? So we start at Passover time with our count, you guys. And for those that are counting omers, um, as you're going to see here in the text, it doesn't say anything about counting omers. This feast is called Shavuot or the Festival of Weeks. Weeks, W-E-E-K-S. The counting of weeks, not counting omers. Omer is a measurement, and it comes from um, Exodus 16 when, when the Hebrews began their work week. They were introduced to the work uh, in Sabbath calendar, and so they were told to collect um, manna, an omer a day per person, right? So that was the measurement. The reason why you see that now is because of an edict of Constantine around 322, where it was forbidden for the Hebrews to keep the, the solar lunar calendar anymore and go by the moon. And they couldn't count the weeks. They couldn't, uh, you know, keep the, the other high Sabbaths. All that was obscure. Okay, so the Jews started doing something ingenious. That wasn't in the edict, which was counting omers, which is basically counting the days and then just call it an omer. That's where it comes from. It, it is a Talmudic tradition of man. It is not in the text. Okay, so uh, it says. All right, so um, here's where we come to the end of um, first fruits and from the morrow after the Sabbath on from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. So. So the wave offering is done with the barley. That's the barley harvest at Passover time, okay? So that's the grains that you're seeing in the fields, not wheat. Uh, the wheat's not in that stage yet. We're, we're, it's heading. Um, the pictures that were sent to me of the naysayers was actually barley, all right? So from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep to the wave offering, ye shall count to yourselves seven Sabbaths complete. Or seven complete Sabbaths. Until the morrow after the seventh uh, Sabbath, you count 50 days. Then you shall bring a new grain offering unto Yahuwah. Bring from your dwellings a wave offering, two loaves of bread, and two tenths of an ephah, a fine flour, and are baked with uh, and are baked with leaven. First fruits unto Yahuwah. This is the first fruits of the wheat harvest, you guys. OK, and it is not at 50 days. I know it seems that way when you're reading um, in, in the English and how it could be obscured. But I assure you, if we're talking about wheat here and we are, there must be wheat to harvest. There must be wheat to grind into flour and to make into loaves. OK. That is just the way it is. And we don't improvise and make up stuff, right? That is not what the text says. It does not say, okay, so if you can't do this, I want you to count the owners. No, it's seven Sabbaths complete, and then you count 50 days, which will bring you to 102 days. And if you do it correctly, it will fall every time on a new moon when there's no moon at all. And so I am suggesting to you that this would be the correct Feast day and not this day they call Pentecost, you guys. And I know that's going to be hard for some people to swallow. But please consider what I'm about to show you. The scriptures tell you that wheat is harvested in the summer. And in John, Yeshua says to the Pharisees, don't you say 
there's still four months until the harvest, right? He's giving you an indicator there, right? Here's a USDA crop of uh, crop calendars for the United States. And uh, maybe I should blow that up a little bit. Hold on. Just in case that's too small for people to see. I want you to take a look. Let's look at barley first. So barley, which is planted in the fall, that's what that means. Whenever you see uh, spring wheat or winter wheat, that's not when they're harvested. It's not harvested in the spring, you guys. Wheat is not harvested in Alabama May 1st, period. I'm, I'm sorry if you don't see it that way. Go study some more until you come to the, to the conclusion, okay? It's planted in the spring. They're both harvested. These are the harvest times in the orange here. As you can see the, the Q down at the bottom, the orange is harvest. Look at the days. So winter wheat, harvest begins in July and runs through to the 1st of September. And in some places in the United States and other, in the world, as I said in one of the last videos, they can stretch their seasons and actually get another um, planting season because of the region where they are. And so therefore, um, their, their uh, harvest time will extend into um, the fall. Okay, so but it's still a, a summer crop, all right? So both spring, as you see there, beginning of August, running into the fall, September and October, that's spring wheat. That's when it's harvested. And winter wheat is harvested in July and August. Now look at the growing season. It's it's planted right here. And this is this is the um, early stage of it. And then the mid season is what you see in the gray. Look here. So it extends, goes from December back to January. This is the same season. Look how many months it takes for that winter wheat. It's 240 days. It's almost a whole freaking year <laughs> to, to grow winter wheat. So they start to harvest in July. Okay. Now, I want you to look at when barley is being harvested because this is what you're bringing me pictures of wheat and you don't know what you're talking about. I can look at the, the grain and tell that you're bringing pictures of barley. The same as the pictures that some people are showing on Facebook of wheat in, uh, in Israel, it's barley that you're taking those pictures of, you guys, or, or passing them around. So stop spreading misinformation. The barley harvest time is, look, right, look, early May, all the way through the summer. So the barley harvest is right around what we just had Passover. What Passover is a is a festival that happens at the barley harvest, the beginning of it. What, what, what? And you see May 1st. So the grain that you're showing me that's being harvested in May 1st in Alabama is actually barley, my friend. And I'm going to take you to a video here now of last year because, I mean, they do grow wheat in Alabama. It's just not the heart of the grain belt, but they do grow. They, they primarily grow a lot of corn and a lot of cotton. <clears throat> but as you can see here, day two of the wheat harvest, this is last year. Look at the day there. That's June. Look as it pops up. June 3rd, 2022 is the wheat harvest. June. June. Okay, not May 1st. So stop with the nonsense, all right? Let's look at the uh, European calendars, okay? I think you're going to notice something here. It's not, um, it's not any different. I mean, that grain belt is pretty consistent all the way across the world. <clears throat> and this is what it looks like. Albania. Look, what, look, look when we, uh, wheat is harvested, June and July. That's the same June, June and July as Oklahoma. Austria, wheat, June, July, August, same as Oklahoma. Belgium, June through August, 
Look at, look at barley. The same. Virtually the same. Bosnia. Look at there. June through August. You know why it just doesn't show spring wheat there? Because it can't grow spring wheat there. It's a it's another variety. It needs it needs more temperate um, climates. There's too much water in these areas, and the seasons are are compri uh, uh, compressed. Okay, so there's only th certain things that they can grow there, but consistently throughout the world, Cyprus, midpoint of May to first of July. Okay, and that's both their barley and their wheat. Okay, so that's that's a little that's that's kind of um you know, outside the pattern. And it's probably because of their terrain and their uh, geography. But um, this is not the standard. Okay? It doesn't set the standard. What we are already setting the standard is it's a winter, it's a summer grain. Summer grain. Even in Australia, where December, January, and February is the, the summer for that part of the world and not winter. That's when the grain's harvested. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> it grows during and harvested during the summer. Look, July, August in Estonia, Croatia, June, July, August. June, July, August, Czech Republic, Finland. Look further north, right? Shorter season. Look at this, shorter. It, it, it's it's different. It's because they get too much water and too much cold. France, a little further south, look at there. Extended, not as compressed as Finland. You see that? Finland's up here. France is down this way. It's further, closer to the equator. You get more seasons. Same as where I am here in Florida, I will get similar bee seasons as I did in Hawaii because I'm closer to the equator. I get more sun, okay? So I get longer seasons and more of them, all right? Pretty consistent all around the world, you guys. Germany, July and August. Yeah. Notice you're not seeing anywhere in the world, maybe except for Cyprus, and that's outside the pattern. Nobody's harvesting wheat. In May. Nowhere. Nowhere. Poland. I got friends in Poland. They can verify this. When is the wheat harvested? When's barley harvested? Look at there. Barley in May. March through May. So you showing me grains being harvested right now in the field is actually barley. Don't fool yourself. Wheat, summer. The Bible is true, you guys. The Bible says it's, that wheat is harvested in the summer. Here's an exception here in Spain. The latter part of May is when they start the harvest. But again, Spain is not setting a pattern here. What's consistent in all the world? Universal. What's a universal truth? That wheat is a summer grain. So we should see universally harvests, harvest um, wheat in that time. And I wish it would have had Israel on there, guys, but I'm going to have to get some independent farmers. I can already see it now. <laughs> to do a powwow with and get them to go to their fields and verify. Because there's some that they could be, they're so disconnected and so <clears throat> wrapped up in um, what they believe that it's absolute truth they won't even go look they just argue 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 falseness and parroted terms that they've heard someone else say well, there's no truth to it here's what the wheat field looks like let's go to my Facebook and um, look at the pictures that were posted there under the post that I made on the secret of the wheat, 
This is from Laura. And you can see. That's what the wheat looks like in, in Oklahoma. Way too early for harvest, you guys. Way too early. This is immature. Immature. That's what it looks like right there. And that's not. That's not barley. That's what the wheat looks like. And notice how this doesn't have all the the, uh, the the pictures you guys were sending that you saying were wheat. An indicator that it's not wheat is all the is all the prickly spine things that come off of that. Because each one of those kernels are going to have like a, a hair that comes off of it. Okay. That's an indicator that you're looking at. All right. But also, if you look at it very closely, and you'll see the, the count of grains, the pattern that the grains make, that's also another indicator. So keep the pictures coming in, you guys. Please help me out in this. I need boots on the ground to, to show that Jonathan's not crazy. He's actually making a point, okay? And I'm not the only one that sees this. World's Last Chance has, has done a, a video on, well, it's in a video. It's in the uh, Sabbath Proof uh, number three in, in the 11 minute mark around that where he talks about um, the actual count from the scriptures and, and notice there's no Omer mention. It's seven Sabbaths complete and then 50 days. And that comes out to 102 days, which will always fall on a new moon. So please consider the information, you guys. Go and check it out. Go and research yourself. Help me out on this. Stop just sitting there and, and going with the flow. Okay, actually do some due diligence and check this thing out. I believe if we if we discover and come to the true Shavuot, because of what happened in the upper room, they were in one mind and one accord, and they weren't divided on the, on the calendar. They were united because there wasn't an issue with the calendar back then, you guys. And Yahuwah didn't have to say 10 days later, no, because they knew when the wheat harvest was. We have to know when the wheat harvest is. Pentecost is misleading. It's not the day the Spirit was poured out. Shalom to you. May Yahuwah bless you and make his face shine upon you. We'll see you in the next video.